Are you comfortable with the government being in total control of your child's education? Think about this for a second. If you are a Democrat, think of the most ignorant Republican in office. If you are a Republican, think of the most insane Democrat in office. That is who has influence over your child's education. You don't need to believe the government is malicious to be apprehensive about public education. Not only does our government have an ineptitude when it comes to effectively educating our youth, there is a foreboding aspect about government funded education that should enliven skepticism toward public education. Let's go beyond government and efficiency but make sure to imagine the most ignorant and insane person from the opposing party. It'll... I'll, I'll come back to that later. If you've been following my channel, you know that I enjoy reading, whether it be fiction or non-fiction. I have eclectic reading tastes. As a result of this, I, I've been reading broadly to increase my general knowledge, in order to integrate many different concepts together, I ended up picking up a book called The Science of Human Nature, a Psychology for Beginners by William Henry Pyle. I wanted to learn about psychology after listening to many talks and lectures from both Jordan Peterson and God Saad. In my mind, learning basic concepts about psychology would help strengthen my understanding of politics and economics and maybe how to interact with people. In reality, there's a million different reasons that I ended up reading about psychology. While reading this book, something caught my attention. Psychology, being the science of human nature, ought to be of use in all fields, where one needs to know the causes of human action. In education, for example, we wish to influence children, and we must go to psychology to learn about the nature of children and to find out how we can influence them. At present, the greatest service of psychology is to education. So true is this that a department has grown up called educational psychology, which constitutes at the present time the most important subdivision of psychology. If the growth, development, and learning of children are all controlled and determined by definite casual factors, then a systematic statement of all these factors would constitute the science of education. And uh, believe me when I say that isn't all. The book then goes on to list four questions educational psychology must solve. The first is asking, what is the aim of education? The second is, what is the nature of education? The third is, what is the nature of the child? And last but not least, what are the most economical methods of changing the child from what it is into what it ought to be. Now, remember that last question, plant it in your mind, and make sure that you can recall it later. So, before we move on, let me clarify one simple thing. And I'll clarify it in more than simple terms, I suppose. I am not afraid of scientific progress. I don't think there is some conspiracy to brainwash our youth. And I am not against psychologists and educators finding the most efficient way to teach or instill wisdom to students. We should not ban science. I'm not fearful of increasing our understanding of child psychology either. I am not anti-science. My issue is much more simple than, than just that. Just imagine for one second that Hillary Clinton is in charge of the government that funds and sets curriculum for your child. What if Donald Trump had this power? Oh wait. Once more, let me make it clear. I'm not looking at this through an Alex Jones lens. Just imagine Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton asking psychologists at the Department of Education, what are the most economical methods of changing the child from what it is into what it ought to be? Seriously, just imagine that. Imagine Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump going up to child psychologists and asking them that about how they can change your children, your children, from what they are now to what we think they ought to be. And I say what, what we think they ought to be as in what they think they ought to be because they're the ones who are setting the curriculum. The centralized Department of Education 
does in fact have control over each 50 states and their education system and then beyond that the county levels the municipal levels and school districts and however else it is divided among the states so ask yourself this do you think education is important if not intrinsically crucial because I do and if you think so if if so then why do you want your kids mind to be shaped by a bunch of corrupt politicians elected by the uninformed from the opposite party the goal of educational psychologists is to find out how to influence your kid and mold them into what the state thinks they ought to be this power is in my opinion far too significant to keep surrendering it to not only the federal government but elected officials who do not share your worldview who are elected by a group of people who also do not share your worldview for the sake of fostering the intellect of the youth we should look away from the one-size-fits-all solution of the federal government